Hello everyone and welcome back to the HTML and CSS Code Academy tutorials. My name is Caleb and today we're going to finish off with the last video with the um, tables. We're going to be a little bit more about tables. So this is going to be our last table video for now. Um, so let's go ahead and go to Code Academy HTML Basics 3 and let's go to better tables. Alright, let's go ahead and get started. So let's reset our code. So, head of table. Here's the table we've made earlier. It's okay, but it's just it just looks like we have a list of famous Hollywood people, or monsters, and their birth years. To make our table look a little more like a table, we'll use the T head, or the table head, and the T body, or the table body tags. These go within the table tag and stand for the table head and table body, respectively. The head tag, or HTML tag, contains information about the web page, example, its title and the body tag contains the contents of the web page. In the same way, the table head tag can be thought of as containing information about a table and the table body tag containing the actual tabular data. Since everything we currently have is just tabular data, put everything we have in our table so far between a set of t-body tags. We'll add the table head next. Okay, so essentially what we're doing, we're just grouping these table rows, or really all of our tabular data, into a, a tag called our T body. Just kind of like how we add everything in our HTML tags. We have a head and a body. Well, the same thing works for tables. We're going to have a table head and a table body. So all we have to do is just add a T body, which is a new tag that we just learned. And I'm just going to take this end of the tag, cut it out. And underneath here, as you can see, we have a line for the T body, I'm just going to follow that line all the way down and then I'm going to paste it in here. That way everything is neatly indented and nested properly. As you can see, we have indents for every new uh, tag. That way later on when we get into more advanced things and things start to look kind of messy, we're not getting confused on what tag we're in or where we're at. So pretty much all we had to do is just put our, all of our table rows and table data into the table body tag. So that's all you have to do. Make sure that your closing table body is before the, your closing table tag and your opening table body tag is right after your table tag. So that's all we have to do for this one. Save and submit. Awesome way to go guys. Doing great. Next exercise is reset our code. So table heads. We just added a T head tag above the T body. It will hold the heading for each column. You add text to the T head similar to a T body like this. So if we look in the example, we have a table row, or really we have a table head, a table row, and then a th, which is going to be our table heading, and then we'll just have whatever we want. In this case, if they say name, is going to be the table heading. And then we close our table heading, and then for our second one, we're going to say favorite color. That would be our next column, and then you see favorite color, and then we close that table heading, and then we close the table row, and then we close our table head tag. Okay, pretty simple. First, we have an opening table head. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Man, sorry about that. First, we have an opening table head tag for the table head. Then, we have an opening table row tag for the row to start the row. After that, a table head opening and closing cell for that name column heading. Notice that we use the table head for the table heading cells instead of TD because it's not like we're adding a table data. We wanted to make sure that it's going to be a table head. There's a difference in between those. Then another table heading cell for the favorite color column heading. Finally, we close the row element with closing the table row tag and close out the table heading element with a closing table head tag. Okay. So the instructions are, we've already created the table head tag element for you. Inside the table heading element, add a single row using a table row element. Within this row, add two table header cells with the value famous monster and birth year. Check out the example above if you get confused. But we're not going to get confused, so all we have to do here is make sure that we're within our table tag, or table head, my bad, not table tag. And now, remember, anytime you do a table, you always have to have a table row. So let's make our table row. So there's our table row. Let's go ahead and hit enter. That way we get a nice indention. Now we have to add our table head. 
And then the first one's going to say famous, and then monster, M-O-N-S-T-E-R. There we go. And as we look up here, we have famous monster as our table heading. Now, after that table heading, all we have to do is, since we want it to be in the same row, just add a new table heading. So let's add a new TH tag. And now, you see we have a cell up here above our, our years, and now we were just going to say um, birth year. So pretty self-explanatory here. And so now we have a famous monster, and then we have the birth year for our table headings. And now you can see these are bolded as opposed to just being not bolded. Okay, so that's what it should look like. Just make sure that everything's within your table head, and that you close your table row, and you also close out your table heading tags. So everything should look like this. And let's save and submit. Awesome guys, way to go. And let's reset our code. Naming your table. Our table is missing a title. We want to add a table row that goes all the way across the top. To do so, we need to use the coal span attribute for the table heading tag. By default, table cells take up one column. If we want a table cell to take up the space of three columns instead of one, we can use the coal span attribute to three. It looks like this. So pretty much, it's just an attribute for our table head and its name, coal span, and then we set it to however many columns we want it to take up. For this example, they're using three, but for over here, we should only have to use two because we only have two columns. So three columns across, and then we close our table head. Go to the results view. We've added a table row for you, but it only spans one column. And remember guys, this is a column. As you can see, this is another column. Because this stuff right here, you see where the border is? That's one column, and then this one is another column. So make the column span two columns with the coal span attribute. Adding the attribute of the column span set the two to the H or to the t uh, table head tag it should do the trick. We return to the results view again. Our title spans two columns now. So all we have to do is go find our title for Famous Monsters by Birth Year, and which is right here. So we can see this because they, what they did is they added a new table row because you always have to have a table row in a table, and then you can add your data. And then instead of adding table data, we're using a table head because we want it to be a heading instead of just the, a normal cell like this one. Okay, so now we're going to add our attribute of coal span for our column span, and we're going to set that equal to 2. And as you can see now, <clears throat> our famous monster by birth now spans across both of our columns and not just one. So that looks correct. And all you have to do is save and submit. Awesome guys, way to go. And let's just reset our code. So style that head. Your table started to look great, but it's still a little bland. We've gone ahead and added some styling to the table to make it a bit easier to read. It's your job to add the finishing touches. Feel free to play around with any of the style attributes we added. You'll learn much more about these styles or these things later during the CSS course. If you want to add more than one style, just separate your styles with a semicolon like so. And so they give us an example down here with an inline style, and they're just showing us the font size is 12 pixels, and then make sure you add your semicolon, and then you can add another style, which they're saying the color set the red. So, make the famous monster and birth year labels emphasize. An example, make them italic size. Okay. Now that's pretty easy. All we have to do is find our famous monster and our birth year, which would be right here, because this is our famous monster. And then what we could do is just come right here and add an emphasis tag, our EM, that we learned way earlier. And I'm just going to cut this one out and then I'm just going to add it right after. So now we see that this is now slanted or emphasized or italicized, whatever you want to call it. Make the famous monster in birth year title red. Oh, so um, so now let's go to the birth year. Getting a little ahead of myself there. Add this one and make this one emphasized as well by adding our, our EM tag. And once again I'm just going to, if I can get this whole thing selected, I'm just going to cut and if we look over here in the birth year and then we paste it, oh, there we go. Now we have famous monster and birth year both italicized. And now we just need to come back up to our, um, <coughs> really what we could do, we could add the whole, um, we could do just the whole table row and make the color red. Or we could individually set each of our table headers 
in in our inline style right here for like the famous monster, we can say color red. It doesn't really matter, but I mean, you're you're doing more work by doing it like that. Since these are nested inside the table row, all we have to do is just come in here and say color and then red and then add a semicolon. And as you can see now, our famous monster and birth year are now red. But like I said before, we could do the same exact thing. So if I were to cut this back out, if we were to come down here into our table head and go to our style, and we were to paste it in here, now only the famous monster is red. And then you'd have to go down to the next table heading, which is birth year over here, and add the other style to that. But I mean, that's more work, especially when you have a lot of columns in your table. Why not just make the whole row the same color, like so? So that works. Either way, I mean, one way you're wasting more time, and time is money, so let's code smarter and not harder. So let's save and submit our code, and we didn't get, so add a style attribute to the first th tag with a value, okay, so I guess they actually want you to set each individual style to red, so I guess we have to go in here to each table header and add our style, which that one's there, and let's go to our second table header, and then that one's there. But usually, you can just do the whole table row. But for this example, Code Academy is not going to accept that. So that's why we had to go in here and add each table header a style of color red. So let's go ahead and save and submit our code. And add a style attribute, the first table header tag. Set the attribute the color red. Okay, so why are we not passing this? Let's see. Make the famous monster and birth year labels emphasize. The famous monster and birth year are both emphasized. Make the famous monster by birth year. Oh, that's why. I'm doing each... Okay, I just misread that. So what we need to do is come back here and delete that. You're not actually making these red. You're making the famous monster by birth year red. I was thinking that's what you're doing red. So let's delete that. And now once we're in here, all we have to do is right after our coal span we can just say style and then now we can say color to red now it should be famous monster by birth year is red and then famous monster and birth year are both black sorry about that just misread that so let's save and submit awesome way to go guys so let's reset our code so recap whoosh we learned quite a bit what do you what can you do now write an html comment create a list ordered and unordered Make text stand out using the emphasize and strong tags. We can change the color, size, and alignment of text using the style attribute, and we can create HTML tables. So, we've actually learned a lot, whether, or not, whether if you believe it or not. I mean, we've learned quite a bit in the past couple of videos. So, hit save and submit code to complete this section and learn about two incredibly useful tags, the div and span tags. Alright guys, so all you have to do is hit save and submit. So, congratulations, you finished this section. And, if you like the video guys, make sure the thumbs it up. Leave a comment down below if you got stuck. I know it was kind of confusing in the last exercise, but I, I cleared that up hopefully for everyone. Um, make sure to subscribe, guys, for the next awesome video, and stay tuned because we're about to learn some very important tags coming up, and then we'll get into some really cool CSS. Alright, guys, until next time, you guys have a wonderful day.